While many of your parents were lucky enough to be born in the United States, my parents were born into the aftermath of the Cultural Revolution in China. My dad grew up in a rural community as a poor farmer, and my mom often had to sleep on suitcases because there simply wasn't enough space. With these conditions, my parents worked extremely hard and eventually studied computer science and engineering at top universities in China before emigrating to the United States to give my sisters and me a better shot. So, coming from parents who knew exactly how valuable education was, it was only rational for them to encourage me to pursue STEM, a high-paying and consistent field of work. I've always been lucky in the sense that my parents have always encouraged me to challenge myself and take difficult classes. However, many girls feel that their input in STEM is neither important nor necessary, and that the male-dominated field has no need for girls who are considered less intelligent or too sensitive for logical tasks. As both a minority, a girl, and a majority, an Asian in this field, here's why inequalities in STEM matter. I was introduced to STEM. I was introduced to STEM four years ago. Before that, I had been a I had been an active gymnast. From toddler group lessons at age five to daily five-hour-long trainings, I remember long car rides with my mom to even longer practices, and waking up early in the weekends to go to day-long competitions. I really loved the sport. It was so much fun to learn new routines and skills, and I enjoyed every second of it. Following a surgery to treat Wolff-Parkinson-White syndrome, a minor heart disorder, I decided to quit gymnastics in order to focus on my studies, and from there I picked up competitive problem-solving. So what is competitive problem solving? It's things like this and this, but also fun puzzles like these, where the motive is to draw a line through all the squares following a specific set of rules. Like gymnastics, it incorporated the need for me to learn new skills as well as work together with my team. At first, it was a simple interest in the field of math, before it snowballed into a love for not only mathematical concepts and ideas, but also the joy and experience of solving fun puzzles with my friends. It might sound like a stereotypical nerd hobby, but it helped me to view the world through a different lens. Rather than seeing conflicts as barriers, I learned to approach each problem with the mindset that with enough time and dedication, any problem could be solved. And at its core, that's what STEM is: it's problem solving and creative thinking, and almost a different lifestyle to be able to see the positives and negative events and use them as launching pads towards a brighter future. To me. STEM brought a new world of understanding and growth. I noticed the discrepancy months later. I cannot tell you how many times I have walked into a competition and been one of two girls, or possibly the only one. Really, the hardest thing in a math competition should be the math. But when I walked into a room as the only girl and received nothing but degrading stares, I couldn't help but find it truly difficult to continue loving math. Various competitions I attended were almost 100% male. And here in Silicon Valley, almost all the attendees were Asian. Call it an ethnic enclave, if you will. But like many others, I saw the reality that the STEM field seemed limited to a set of characteristics: Asian and male. Not only was diversity rare, it was often unwelcomed. Other competitors, other competitors were often cold, bordering on xenophobic. In the ways that they formed cliques and isolated each other. At competitions with strictly Asian male populations, I saw the pitiful state of discrimination in the field of innovation and growth among the generation driving our future. It's crazy to think that this kind of judgment still exists in this day and age in an affluent community like our own, but it does, and worse, it's so easily dismissed. Now more than ever, we need to bridge the gap in gender equality in STEM. The lack of input or the lack of women in STEM is not simply an issue of equality; it is a lack of input of half the population. When seatbelts were first invented, they were designed to fit the average male body, and countless lives of women and children were taken because of this ignorance to gender-specific details. In fact, women were 47 percent more likely to be seriously injured in a car accident. Most biomedical and clinical research is done based off of testing done on men. On the assumption that they, as on the assumption that they serve as an accurate representation of our population. In everyday examples like office temperature, which is often tailored to suit the average male, this world is designed for men and constantly serves to discourage women. As we progress, it becomes increasingly clear that these gender gaps in STEM are unacceptable. However, this isn't to say that all is bad. This is my second year at the Avery Robotics Club here at Amateur. 
where we have just finished designing our new autonomous submarine to compete in the international RoboSub competition against acclaimed STEM colleges like Caltech and Cornell. It's been an amazing experience, and I've learned so many new applicable skills I never would have if I didn't take the chance to try and apply because of the gender imbalance. Last year, I was, one, I was the only girl in the mechanical division and one of four or five girls in the entire club. This year, we have almost 10. And while it may not be a huge difference, and while it may be impractical to hope for a perfect balance in genders, it's important to acknowledge this growth because that's all it takes to make a difference. Now, as the majority, it's important for me to acknowledge my allowances. It's a commonly enforced stereotype that the STEM field tends to be dominated by Asians, and here in Silicon Valley, it certainly seems true. In fact, it's represented in the STEM clubs across our campus, like the math and physics clubs, whose majority of members are Asian. Looking at the recent teams representing the United States in the International Math and Science Olympiads, you'll notice there is a clear majority. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with these stereotypes. To quote Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, a Nigerian author, the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but that they are incomplete. Stereotypes generally aren't created with bad intentions, but rather from misconceptions because of a lack of familiarity. What many people do not see is the story behind our desire for education, that to many of our parents, education was the only escape from poverty, and the ideal to pursue knowledge has become ingrained in our values. From each different story behind the pursuit of STEM comes different thoughts, different goals, and different motives. And because I can acknowledge as a majority that the repetition of these ideals cannot serve to encourage innovation, it is necessary to promote diversity in STEM. In September, I attended a competition called Mass Prize for Girls held at MIT. It had 285 girl attendees, and we tested on a multitude of topics in 20 questions in 150 minutes. The purpose of this competition was to inspire girls in competitive math to continue pursuing high-difficulty math, despite the lack of representation of women in STEM. It emphasized the idea that our sense of belonging should never be in question, no matter what educational setting we found ourselves in. And that's all I'm truly trying to say. That no matter your race, gender, sexual orientation, or socioeconomic status, each and every student should have the right to pursue an education where their sense of belonging is never in question. So to the girls and the underrepresented in, the, in this audience, I implore you to take a chance. Join one of the many STEM clubs here at Amador or challenge yourself to take a harder class in math this upcoming year. You may not like it, and that's fair. STEM isn't for everyone, and I am by no means saying that the only way to be empowered is through STEM. But the choice to try is yours, and it does not belong to stereotypes or inequalities. To everyone else in the audience, I implore you to challenge boundaries and empower those around you. Because that's all it takes to make a difference, and that's all it takes to better the world. Thank you.